All right, so I finally feel like I'm kind of on the home stretch here with the horizontal stabilizer. Last major step is to uh, put the rear spar in place, get it riveted to these in-spar ribs, and then uh, all the rivets that attach the skins to the spar flange. Now, before I do that, I'm going to kind of inspect everything, give everything a once-over, just make sure I didn't somehow miss any of the rivets in the interior area here, because once the spar is in place, that's it. You, you don't have access to the inside there anymore. So I'll do that, probably run a vacuum cleaner uh, through there or blow the air hose, just make sure there's no scraps or bits of anything rattling around in there that shouldn't be there. And um, then I'll get to work on the rear spar. And make sure right direction. That way is up, this way is the right side. Right. Looks about right. It's a relief. I don't, didn't expect it not to, but still, it's good. I'm just going to get a lot more Clicos in this. comment one time, somebody saying I use too many Clicos or there's no need to use so many Clicos. I probably do overdo it. The way I look at it is, I can't imagine it hurts anything. And even if I end up putting a Clico in a hole, taking it right back out again to put the rivet in, Clico sure that everything was nice and lined up before I go trying to rivet it. So, you know, it takes a little more time, a little more effort. So what? Uh, I know they make a pneumatic Clico squeezer, I guess you call it. Uh, so far, of all the things I've done on the plane, squeezing these things is pretty low effort. Concerned, just repetitive. All right, that's it. All right, so now I'm going to attach the rear spar to the flanges of the in-spar ribs. That's all of these here, where these uh, copper-colored Clicos are. Uh, for that, I'm going to be using LP4-3. So these are uh, line rivets or pop rivets. You use those on all these uh, all these ones that you can't get to, basically, that you can't get to the back side. The, the ends, the tip, and the inboard most, uh, you can get to the back side, so I'll be able to get to those with the squeezer. And for those, you use solid rivets, but for all of these, they're blind rivets. So again, LP4-3s, and I'm gonna pull out the old pneumatic blind rivet squeezer, gun, whatever you call this thing. Um, Used it before, I really liked it. I think I used it on the rudder, I guess, was the first place I used this. So um, I couldn't use it down inside. It wouldn't fit down inside for some of those, but I'll certainly get to these. So um, I may do a practice for it in something just to remember what this thing feels like. And then uh, the rest of these should be pretty quick. All right, let's see. I'm going to start. Here. 4-3. And there 
goes nothing. It's good. So, go on and do all the metals. That's not good. with oil, which I haven't done. Performance is dependent on oil level. Okay. sitting over there for months. I wonder if the oil got low. That worked just fine. Good. Final oil. All right. All right. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twenty more of those. And we'll do the ends. And then. See how the hand tool does in that spot. I have two. I have a chunky one. It's probably gonna have the same problem. Yep. Kind of gets down there. Now this guy. It's better. So we will be using this. The old fashioned way. In case I'm going to start on the end out here. And 
looks good. All right, so that's how we'll be doing those. Alright, cool. So now, the rest of them. Alright, so now I'm doing the solid rivets on the outboard uh, end spar rib to rear spar. So these are, uh, let's see, 470 84 4s, uh, three of them. And chosen to go with the hand squeezer on these just because there's only six of them three on either end and it's just a little quicker to set up so do this one Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention about these, but the the plans put up some fuss about how you need to keep the manufactured head, the, yeah, the manufactured head on the rivets along the spar web here out, facing out, uh, to provide clearance for the elevator, which surprises me because I guess it would be the center ones. You know, I can't believe the curve of the elevator would really come that close in this corner. It couldn't possibly, but maybe right along here it might. And, of course, with the with the pop rivets, with the blind rivets, you don't have a choice. The, the factory head, or the manufactured head, I should say. Manufactured head is going to be on the outside. That's, that's the way they go. But with these, I suppose you do have a choice, and you could put them in the other way. Um, and I guess maybe that could interfere with the um, with the elevator, but no worries. And I'm trying to remember. I think I've talked about this before. There was no such guidance on the rudder, uh, well, the vertical stabilizer and rudder. And I think those I put them in the other way because it was easier with the squeezer. And so I hope you know. I hope my rudder turns. <laughs> All right, okay, so I've got the rear spar riveted to all the in-spar ribs. I went ahead and popped these two snap bushings in place. Those are for the elevator trim. And now I've just got to rivet all these rivets that attach the skin to the spar flange. And uh, see, I think there's about 252 of them, uh, if memory serves. So uh, yeah, obviously that's a job for the pneumatic squeezer and I'm gonna get started on that.
All right. I am almost one half of one quarter of the way done. <laughs> uh, no, it's going, it's going fast though. It's going quickly. That's good. So, onward. Last one. That's it. Makes me think. I don't see any missing. Still got a few more rivets to do down here. Ones that I put off. That's it. That's it. These can pick this up. I'm going to clean the table off. May wait until tomorrow for all this. Clean the table off, get this sucker off the floor. Woo! All right. That didn't take too long. Okay, so that's it. There were a few more rivets I did the next day, and those were surprisingly difficult. They were the really long universal head 84s that attach the inboard ribs to the front spar. And I was assuming I would be able to get at them with the squeezer, but the angles just weren't right, so I had to buck them with a double offset set. Unfortunately, I didn't record it, but it's probably for the best because it turned into a real wrestling match. So if anyone has any video of someone doing those, I'd love to see it so I got get better for next time. Uh, but all's well that ends well. The stabilizer is done, and now it's on to the elevators. So thanks for watching.